Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, you know how it is with nap time. You think that you're going to be able to get them down at a certain time, and then you can't get them down at that time. So, you know, it is what it is. And this live isn't going to be very long. It's a pretty cut and dry, a pretty cut and dry thing. So when you get on, I'd love to see who's here. Hey, Chell. Um, I'm going to pull up my Facebook so I can see your comments because, as you know, I'm kind of blind and I can never see the comments on my phone. So we're just going to share this real quick. Let me know when you pop on. Let's see. There we go. Share. Okay. So the title of this live stream is, is something, it's about fitting in. Our obsession with fitting in is killing the brilliance and uniqueness in America. So this live stream is brought to you by labels and um, this weird concept that we have of fitting in. Um, Brene Brown, who is a, an amazing, amazing researcher, she sh researches shame actually, um, is, she kind of is the one who brought this uh, idea to my, to my awareness. Maya Angelou talks about it, um, had spoken about it, that fitting in, it's about belonging. So it's really this idea of fitting in versus truly belonging. And truly belonging is something that you find within yourself. You'll never belong you belong everywhere and nowhere. That's the quote from Maya, Maya Angelou. And the risk is high, but, but, but the reward is great. So when you really belong to yourself, you're able to find your voice. You're able to talk about the hard topics. You're really able to create the most amount of change, not within, within your own life, but within society at large when you realize that you belong only to yourself. But for some reason, in this world, in this country, and again, I specifically speak to America, but I'm sure that this is a global problem, uh, is this idea of fitting in. This idea of there is a way that we should behave. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by should behave? It's any time that you get embarrassed by the way that you're acting or the way that your child is acting because it doesn't fit the expectations that you have. That's what I mean by fitting in. Um, fitting in is, you know, dressing a certain way so that people will talk to you, picking up certain vernacular so that you seem cool. Um, you know, just think about high school <laughs> and junior high, honestly. Junior high is when it really starts and then high school it gets kind of exacerbated, but just really think about, you just wanted to fit in, right? You just wanted to be normal. You just wanted to be accepted by your peers. You wanted your parents to get you. You wanted to not feel like you were always um, doing something wrong. So when I say misbehave, it's because every single person has an ideal, whether they've consciously made it or not, of how they expect themselves to behave and also how they expect others to behave. And we specifically really do this to kids. And there's a huge movement out there right now of parents trying to, you know, what is wrong with my kid? Why don't they listen to me? Why don't they do as they're told? Why don't they act appropriately? Why don't they, um, you know, behave in public? Why are there always these outbursts? Why do they get so upset over such tiny little things that don't bother me? Why can't they pick up after themselves? There's all these expectations, and you guys have heard me talk about this before, that we have all sorts of expectations that we have put on our children that aren't put these expectations on our children, even itty bitty babies. We have this expectation that they're going to sleep through the month or sleep through the night by three months. We have this expectation that they're not going to be colicky. We have this expectation that we're not going to have to hold them constantly. We're pregnant. We have this baby. We create this dream inside of our head and then our baby doesn't match that dream and immediately there must be something wrong with it. There's a lip tie. There's a tongue tie. There's a, and I'm not saying that Western medicine is 
I love that Facebook keeps trying to kick me off every time I'm having these really intense conversations that completely break the mold. It really just like lights me up because I know that I'm speaking a truth that honestly society would rather me not say. So, um, sorry about that. Um, so what I was saying is that these expectations we have make us think that there's something wrong with our kids. Okay, so we go and we bring them to the doctors and we don't even understand how the medical system works. We don't understand that doctors get paid by pharmaceutical companies to prescribe more drugs. We don't understand that therapists and doctors have behind the door deals. If you send me X amount of uh, kids to go through therapy with me, I'll give you a kickback. Nobody really thinks about how our healthcare system is set up and we just trust it blindly so often. And we have children who don't behave the way that we want them to behave, the expectations that we have on them because it was what was expected of us. And maybe our parents didn't know why they expected us. It's a cultural, it is ingrained in our society so deeply and so far back that I have yet to be able to find a time in modern like in recorded history where we didn't expect our kids to sit down be quiet be seen and not heard respect their elders be committed to helping with chores around the house and not really do what they want and they, they we we have this box and we want to put them in their box and this is where they need to be and anytime they try to get out of their box we're like no no no, no. it's like the playpen that we put our kids in and they finally learn how to crawl out of it and we're just like no 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 go back into your playpen oh no 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 go put it back into your playpen so when each time you put your kid back into the playpen you are shaming them in some way you are teaching them that they are not powerful you're teaching them that what they desire doesn't matter you're teaching them that their needs are not important and that you know best even when most of us can attest that as parents, we have no fucking clue what we're doing and we lay awake at night wondering if we're fucking up our kids. You know, I did a whole post yesterday about how it's impossible to fuck up your children, so I'm not going to go into that. What this post is really about is the shocking, shocking realization, knowledge, that if you look at the last 40 years, every year, minus a few, you know, random years the graph goes like this when it comes to suicide rates in this country in all areas it doesn't matter what demographic you're in the suicide rate goes up it continues to go up and then you think about you know those famous people that we know in the last couple of years who have you know been committed suicide i often think of robin williams and anthony bourdain two people that I held in really, really high regard, two geniuses of their crafts, two people that really broke the mold and still decided that it was better to exit stage right than to continue fighting against society. And I say this because I recently found out that a good, I don't even want to say a good friend, a good acquaintance, someone that I knew, someone who I can think of multiple times that he made me laugh, that he helped my brain expand because of his genius, he committed suicide. Someone that most people think of happy and when they have the memories of him, of a jokester, you know, again, Robin Williams, this the guy that was so, so funny that it literally crushed some of us. I remember finding out that Robin Williams had committed suicide and I was crying at my desk. I had never met Robin Williams, but he was so impactful in my childhood that when he, I found out he had died and not only died, but had killed himself because he was so depressed because he didn't fit the mold that society wanted him to fit in because he didn't fit in he killed himself it was too much the world the society that we had created the expectations on him to be happy all the time the the inner turmoil was too much and he didn't know how to control his own power and the only power he knew was to take his own life and then you look at the suicide rate in general and it keeps going up teen suicides up homosexuals 
you know, gays, kids who are labeled as gay, straight, you know, not straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, suicide rate up. People of color, suicide rate up. White kids, literally just because they, they're anxious and depressed, up. It doesn't matter what demographic. It literally doesn't matter. Divorced men. I didn't know this, but divorced men have an extremely high suicide rate because they get cut off from their connection. We, we rally around the woman, take her word for it. Um, she's the one that has the friends a lot of the times, and then they get divorced, and these men end up alone, disconnected, think that they're failures, they failed at their marriages, and they end up killing themselves. And I had no idea that this was like a really high number of divorced men end up committing suicide. You look at people who are medicated from a really young age. I'm talking kids that are like three, four, five years old that get diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, autism, all these labels that we want to put on our children because there must be something wrong with my kid. He doesn't act the way that I want him to. He doesn't act the way he should. There must be something wrong with him. I'm taking him into the doctor. I'm getting diagnosed. Oh, he's diagnosed with this disease. And now I'm going to medicate him. Now here's my treatment plan. Here's all my things. I refuse to get my kids diagnosed with anything because the label doesn't matter. My kids don't need to fit in anywhere. My kids need to know how to harness the power that they have, how to create a life that they love, how to belong to themselves, how to have self-love, self-worth, self-knowing. It doesn't matter to me if some doctor who created some test somewhere decides my kid has high functioning blah, blah, blah. It's irrelevant. My kid is my kid. He is unique and he is brilliant and he chose me as his mother to raise him and to teach him. This is something I strongly, strongly believe that my children chose me for a reason. It's the reason why I can undergo massive and massive changes in my own life while still being a mom because I know it's part of my journey of teaching them. So no, I don't have any diagnosis for my kids. All I know is that my kids behave one way compared to other children their age and they act another way compared to children their age. And they just act the way they are. They just are who they are. They're not misbehaving. They're behaving exactly as they behave. Now, do I know that there are expectations in society like don't murder, don't be physically violent, don't name call? Yes, I understand that. But I think that the fact that we are so obsessed with labels in this country, we just automatically give people boxes. My kid, my baby should act like this. My baby should sleep through the night. My baby should not be screaming at me. My baby shouldn't be hitting me. My baby should, shouldn't, should, shouldn't, should, shouldn't. All these arbitrary, made up, random actions that we require of our children and most of us have no idea why have you ever been like in a in an outdoor area and like you're fine you think your kid's fine and then all of a sudden you just like feel somebody judging you from the outside you just like you can tell that someone else is not okay with the way that your kid is acting that's on them so when i say that fitting in is killing america it's because all our children feel it too. We feel it too. We can feel when we're being judged. We can feel when we're not acting the way that someone else thinks that we should. And because we haven't created our own boundaries, our own standards, our own understanding of how we know we're supposed to act. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, everyone that's been popping on. Sorry, I've kind of been like in the zone from California. Hello. So... This is what I mean by we're killing our children. When you look at the suicide rate has gone up every year for 40 years and you look at the amount of children who are diagnosed at an extremely young age. My friend who died, he was diagnosed with ADHD. He got addicted to his ADD medications and he turned into an alcoholic. He was 
injected with all sorts of stuff, testosterone, all sorts of things from a young age because he didn't fit the size. He was a shorter guy. This was the 80s, so we don't really do that so much anymore. But it was still something that happened to him because he didn't fit. He wasn't big enough. His voice wasn't low enough. They pumped him full of testosterone. They did all these medical treatments to him because he wasn't the way he should be. Ha I'm talking brilliant. I am an extremely intelligent person. I don't surround myself with people who don't, you know, make me think. The conversations I had had with this man blew my mind. He was one of the first people to ever explain to me that you can be plant-based and vegan and it's not because you have any problem with eating meat. It's because you have a problem with the farm industry and you have a problem with the way that food is created in this country. He was vegan because of his morals and his standards, not because he didn't want to eat meat. He loved meat. He was from North Carolina. He grew up around this farming industry that he couldn't support, so he didn't support it, and he made those choices with his dollars. He voted with his dollars. He was extremely politically active. He, that's how I met him was through political activism, and now he's gone. He took his own life because he just didn't fit in. He couldn't find somewhere to fit and he didn't realize that he belonged only to himself and his uniqueness and his brilliance was needed. And he was in his mid thirties, I believe. So he stayed on this plane a lot longer than some people do. I have another person that this year, or I guess last year, cause it's the new year, but committed suicide. We believe, we don't know. It was an overdose, but it seems pretty obvious that it was not accidental because he had been clean for a really long time and then all of a sudden was found um, overdose on heroin. He was gay. He had been put through every single one of those gay treatments. His parents didn't support him. They didn't love him. They had tried to force him to be a certain way by giving, put it, giving him those camps. Um, medicating him, sending him through every single thing that there is to ungay a person. And he felt so disconnected. He didn't have self-love. He didn't have self-worth that he is gone now too. I can think of other people that, yes, technically they died from an overdose, but we'll never know if it was intentional or accidental. That's a, a scary statistic, honestly, for me, the amount of people I know who were clean and then relapsed and the relapse is what killed them one time using the amount of heroin that they had used previously before they got clean for two years one time of being rejected and it was just enough to send them over the edge that they went back we're killing our children because we think that there's a way that they should act and we think that we have any power over them at all my post yesterday made it very clear, I'm not going to go into it, but essentially I compared the fact that there's all these moms out there thinking that they're failures and their kids end up growing up being amazing. Viola Davis grew up with a drunk dad, she went days without showering, didn't have food, all these things, and we all know her from How to Get Away with Murder. I'm pretty sure that she's won an EGOT at this point, and that's an Emmy, an Oscar, a Grammy. I don't know if she's ever won a Grammy. Anyway. She's an award-winning actress, and that didn't happen until she was 40. What would have happened if Viola Davis killed herself? We wouldn't have all of these things, that sh the wonderful, brilliant work that she has given the planet. But she's someone that could say her childhood failed her, right? But she rose above it. Now on the flip side, I also know of a family who did everything right, never yelled, never screamed, thought their kids were brilliant, thought, you know, did everything they could in their power to help their child. And one of their oldest son murdered, a 16 year old murdered an eight year old in cold blood by slitting his throat. Just got up one day, stood on a trail, slit this kid's throat. And when asked why he did it, he says, I don't know why I did it, but I did. So he admitted it. And then the parents spent thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get their kid diagnosed. He's got to be a psychopath. He's got to have sociopathy. He, there's got to be a medical reason why he did this. And there was nothing. Not a single therapist from the defense or the prosecution could prove that this kid was out of his mind. And that's why he had killed an eight-year-old. 
So that's what I mean that you don't have any fucking power over your kid. So you shouldn't feel like a failure because it doesn't matter if you do everything perfectly. They can still turn out to be a murderer. And it doesn't matter if you do everything wrong. They can still turn out to be a Nobel Peace Prize winner or a world famous actress or any of these other things. The the reason why we have such an epidemic of suicide, of autism, of of ADD, of all of these different diagn of depression, anxiety in children. You have eight year olds who are depressed. You have nine year olds talking about suicide. You have six-year-olds being put on pretty much meth with their Ritalin and their ADD medications because they don't act how they should. Because the public education system is completely overwhelmed with the amount of kids because our parents have, no, have given the authority and the responsibility of raising their kids away to people who are underpaid, underprepared, have their own warped sense of how kids should act. You know, my, my son's not in the public education system anymore, you guys know this, but his second grade teacher, he loved her. He absolutely loved his second grade teacher. She and I had great conversations. We were able to really work a, a plan around the fact that he was advanced, even for being an advanced placement and ways to keep him not bored. He fucking hated his third grade teacher and he was the only male teacher in the school. He was actually, my son was super stoked at first to have this teacher and by halfway through the year, he fucking hated it. He was always getting these behavioral reports sent home about how he wasn't focusing in class, how he was getting up from his desk, how he was um, causing mischief in the class, but his, his grades were straight A's. He was getting, well whatever the equivalent of an A is in third grade. It's like numbers or some shit, but he was getting straight A's and yet he wasn't acting how he should act. And my son was afraid to speak up when he didn't know the answer. My son's like me, he's really good at taking tests. So when the public education system is completely formed around fitting in to a standardized test, like even just the word standardized. So this is the standard and the standard is to be normal to be average, to be a C student. The standard is to be 70% of whatever it is in any area and that's good enough. I'm sorry, being 70% of anything isn't good enough for me. I'm 100% in. I am 100% committed as, I'm 150% committed as a parent. I am 150% committed to keeping myself healthy. I am 150% committed to helping break the paradigm around the idea of fitting in and should. I never fit in. Never. I am six feet tall. I've been tall for always. I had a breast reduction when I was 17. I started, I was a B cup by fourth grade. I have, I have an extremely large intellect. I've always been a nerd. I normally wear glasses. The only reason why I don't wear glasses on my live streams is actually I love the way that I look without them and I love um, the feeling that I get. But yeah, I, I should be wearing glasses right now. I also learned a lot about eye doctors and how they're actually out to make a buck. So I've been trying to train my eyes to be healthier. But we have all these shoulds. We have all these boxes. We have all these containers. We have all these perceptions. And then when our kids don't fit in them, we lay awake at night staring at the ceiling thinking, fuck, I fucked up my kid, I'm ruining his life, he doesn't like me, by the time he's a teenager, we're gonna have nothing to talk about, I'm totally cutting him off, I'm totally failing as a mom, because your kid doesn't act the way you think he should, but you don't even know why he should act that way to begin with, who decided that? Your child is acting precisely the way they are meant to act. They are acting that way because they are either mirroring you, as in like reflecting your own anxiety, depression, and angst back to you, or because they don't have the skills to communicate what they need, so they're acting out because that's what they knew worked when they were a little baby. This is what I mean by you are in charge. You are responsible for teaching your kids how to use their power because everyone knows that babies are superpowers, uh, have superpowers, right? Moms hear a baby cry in the middle of the grocery store and all of a sudden our boobs start like dripping with milk. You hear, you can hear your baby crying from across the room or the house 
with no baby monitor when nobody else, they're like, the fuck? You can hear that? Because your baby has this superhuman power of being able to call you and you've got super mommy ears and you can hear her crying. So, but that's the way that they come into the world knowing that that's how they, they elicit a response from you, how they get your attention to tell them how they need, what they need. And because we're not teaching them the, you know, a grown up version of the, a, a next level child, like developmentally appropriate next level, they revert to acting like a baby. And then we say, why are you acting like such a baby? Well, because when they were a baby, they were pretty fucking powerful and they remember that. And so they're trying to get that power back and they don't know really where it went. And then if you continue to force them into the box, continue stifling them, they either end up living a life that they completely hate, going to a job they hate, getting married to someone that doesn't really turn them on, just going through the motions of life, medicating with every anxiety and antidepressant that they can think of just to make it through because they don't want to be selfish and kill themselves. Or they kill themselves. You can't tell me that we don't have an epidemic in this country when it comes to suicide, depression, anxiety, obesity. All of the problems in this country stem from the fact that people don't belong to themselves. They are trying to fit in. They're either trying to fit in with their friends, they're trying to fit into their family, they're trying to fit into their career, they're trying to fit into school, they're trying to fit in all these places instead of owning their own power, knowing that the only person they belong to is themselves, knowing how to use their voice, owning their uniqueness, owning their brilliance, not needing to be, you know, average in a hundred different things, but being a master in one or two. That's what we used to do. We used to all become apprentices and we became a master of something. You know, Leonardo da Vinci, genius, genius, genius. He became a master craftsman. He created these amazing things. Isaac Newton became a master at physics. Albert Einstein became a master at physics. Albert Einstein was told that he was a moron and got kicked out of multiple schools because he didn't fit in. Steve Jobs dropped out of high school. Steven Spielberg dropped out of high school. Go Whoopi Goldberg dropped out of high school. You look at all these people who have dropped out of the public education system and then still made a giant name for themselves. And then you look at the amount of people who force their way through the system, who, who just put their head down, okay, this is the way I should behave, I'm going to do this because this is what I should do, and if I do what I'm supposed to do, then I'm going to have a good life. And they trudge through and they trudge through and then they get out of the school system and they just get thrown into another conveyor belt, working for someone else, not being able to have their own ideas, being shushed, being silenced, having their voice taken away from them. And one day they just can't handle it anymore. They say, you know what, I'll try again next time. And they kill themselves. And then that number is happening younger and younger. Your teen suicide rate is up double, I believe, since... 1990? So in 20 years, you've got twice as many kids killing themselves? I live in Utah. The suicide rate here for teens is astronomical because of the amount of boxes we're trying to force our children into because of the control of religion in this state. And the religion seeps into the public education system in our um, dress codes and behavioral standards. You've got kids who are being medicated when they don't need to be. They're being given meth. Yeah, honey, I'll be there in just a minute. Can you go show Leo, please? My three-year-old always wants to be on the lives, guys. I know that I've been in here too long when he's ready to come bother me. Okay, honey, I need five more minutes, okay? Go choose another game. I locked the door this time and he's not happy. So I'm just going to leave you with this. If you are a mom who thinks that your child should be behaving a certain way, that there must be something wrong with your kid, whether you've had them diagnosed already and you know, okay, he's got ADD, okay, he's high functioning autistic, whatever it is. If you have a kid that is misbehaving as far as you're concerned, then we need to talk. It is my life's work to allow children to be monsters.
to misbehave, to break the mold, to not fit into boxes. Because boxes are killing us. Fitting in is killing us. It's killing our society. Because once you fit in somewhere, you never want to leave it, right? So you've got all these ideological bunkers. That's what Brene Brown calls them. Ideological bunkers that people sit in. Your news feed is only filled with people that agree with you. If you find someone who doesn't agree with you, you just delete them. You only follow news sources that agree with you. So if you just keep getting things that you agree with, you agree with, you agree with, and you never go outside. You never see what's outside of there because you're so afraid of what would happen. Oh my God, my friends wouldn't like me. I wouldn't get invited to the parties. I wouldn't be invited to weddings. Nobody would call me anymore. I would be by myself. And for some reason, we are so afraid of being by ourselves. Or we spend thousands and thousands of dollars on therapy and sitting with a therapist trying to process our, process our childhood because we don't, we're not acting the way that we think we should and there must be something wrong with me, right? There's something wrong with me. I need to see a therapist. There's something wrong with me. I'm not happy. There's something wrong with me. I'm always anxious. There's something wrong with my kid and he's driving me crazy. My kid's misbehavior is ruining my life, so I need him to be diagnosed so I can medicate him so he can act the way he should so I can get my life back. No. All of that is fucking wrong and all of it is ruining our society. We don't have innovators. We don't have a few and far between. The amount of genius and potential that gets stifled and shut off because it doesn't fit the current mold that we all hate. We can all agree that this country is fucked up in a lot of ways. I talk about the public education system a lot because it's something that I know. Healthcare a lot because it's something that I know. I'm a massage therapist. I work with a lot of people who are in chronic pain. I've been in chronic pain. I had fibromyalgia. I have degenerative arthritis. There's all sorts of things that I know behind the scenes when it comes to the healthcare system, which again is one reason why I don't tend to go into the healthcare system. Two of my babies were born at home once I learned that home birth really isn't as dangerous and scary as the politicians and the healthcare system would like you to think. Especially when you learn that, you know, $10 billion every year is lobbied to Congress from the healthcare industry to keep it the way that it is. They don't want to cure your kids. They want to medicate them because medication equals profits. They don't want to cure you. They want to medicate you. And when they medicate you, you're easier to subdue. You become a mindless sheeple who says, yes, sir, no, ma'am, thank you, you're welcome and goes through life on your hamster wheel until you die. And you didn't do anything that you loved. You didn't have any of the experiences that you wanted. You didn't have the connections that you desired because you were so busy fitting in and doing as you were told. And you were strong enough at least to stay alive. But too many people aren't, are being told that their power doesn't matter that they don't matter, that they don't fit in, that they are rejected. And because they are not being taught that they are the most powerful, most beautiful, most unique, most brilliant thing on the planet, they're killing themselves. And we are losing out on it. It's us. We are the ones who suffer when someone decides to kill themselves. Society suffers every time a teenager takes their life. Society suffers every time an 82-year-old takes their life because they didn't fit in and they didn't want to be a burden and they didn't think that anybody loved them because we are not teaching what is important and what is important is self-worth, self-love, self-esteem, power, brilliance, genius, not fitting in a box because either you fit in a box your whole childhood and then spend most of your adulthood trying to break out of the box or you spend your childhood not fitting into the box and being rejected by your parents and your peers and your teachers and thinking that there's something wrong with you. So then you commit to your box even more once you become an adult. And very, very few people realize that they were not born to fit in. It's like Lady, Lady Gaga says, right? 
Baby, I was born this way. Your children are born this way for a reason. Because they are powerful, they are brilliant, they are unique, and they don't need a label. They don't need to be medicated. They don't need to be put into any box. They need you to love them. They need you to love yourself. They need you to see that they are exactly who they are. And they know exactly how they serve this world. And it's your job to remember it for yourself so that you can teach it to your kids because they do need our help. They need us to teach them. Not because they need saving, not because they wouldn't be able to figure it out, but because that is what we decided when we took the responsibility of parenting to do. When we actively made the choice to carry this baby and hold it in our womb and love it no matter what, And yet as soon as that baby's born, if that baby doesn't act the way it should, we all of a sudden put all sorts of restrictions on its love. A child who's abused physically, emotionally, mentally, they don't stop loving their parents. They stop loving themselves because they think that they're unlovable. Because they don't know what it is that gets you so mad at them. And what's getting you mad at them is that you think your child should act a certain way. You are trying to fit your child into some sort of box that doesn't even exist. There's no box for you. There's no box for your kid. We are all powerful. We are manifestation of the creator in full form. We create our lives. We create our destiny. We are the masters of our space, physical, mental, emotional. It is your choice how you respond to your children. It is your choice whether or not you continue to sit on the hamster wheel wondering why my kid misbehaves, why am I failing? Or it's your choice to get off and get out of the cage and own your brilliance and your beauty and your unique self because once you own it you can teach your kids to own it too and that's a world that I'm excited to live in a world where everyone already knows that they are worth anything and everything they could ever desire where everyone can walk around and saying I know who I am I know what I am I know how I serve And I see that in you all as well. I know who each and every one of you are. You are a creator. You are a god. You are a monster. I know what you are and what you are is beautiful, brilliant, creative, unique. And how you serve is from love. From pure, unconditional love for humanity, for yourself. For this world that we live in. Not the hatred and the judgment and the shame that is constantly being perpetuated in this society. But from pure, unconditional love. I see you. I know you. And I love you. You don't need to fit in. Let me help you find a way to true belonging. And let me help you find a way to teach your children to belong to themselves. Because a society where everyone belongs to themselves is a society that I would love to be a part of. With that, my not so super long live stream that ended up being a half an hour is concluded. I don't see any questions. Um, If you guys have any questions or want to reach out to me, feel free. I will leave the link below as I do for uh, the application to work with me. 
And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. And I hope this was helpful. Please share this to your friends. Um, and I will talk to you all very soon. I love you all.